it's, it's, it's a problem of oligarchs basically trying to protect their reputation, to silence the truth so that they can carry on, you know, frankly, doing the business that they're doing. Um, and that old advice to journalists, follow the money if you want to find the truth, is now becoming impossible because so many journalists are being threatened by the rich and powerful. Well, let's uh, look ahead to what's happening in the House of Commons after PMQs uh, today. In the Commons later, MPs are debating the economic crime bill. Well, the Labour MP Liam Byrne and the Conservative MP David Davis want to amend the legislation to prevent oligarchs using English courts to silence journalists. And Liam Byrne joins me now. Morning, Liam. Hi, Matt. How are you? Oh, very good. We've, we've heard a lot in the past about London being a sort of centre for libel tourism. How bad is this problem you're talking about later? It's, it's epic. So in the surveys that have been done on investigative journalists, what they found is that about three quarters of um, journalists have had some kind of legal attempts to shut them up. So sometimes that is, uh, as you may know, just people sending um, uh, a kind of a letter before action where, we, where the individual... Uh, who's being investigated kind of threatens the journalist with legal action if they pursue their line of inquiry. But what's happened recently is that oligarchs are now basically taking journalists to court. And what they're doing is not trying to win their case. They're just trying to rack up gigantic legal bills, which an individual journalist could never afford, in order to intimidate them from writing their story. So the UK now is responsible for more legal actions against journalists than America and Europe put together. So we've basically become this kind of global epicenter of lawfare designed to silence the truth tellers. And our amendment today basically just gives the judge the power to, to stop that. So what, what would, talk me through a scenario then, uh, without getting us into legal trouble, um, <laughs> the sort of thing that happens at the moment and what your amendment would do to prevent that? Yeah, so, so so this is the irony. If we if, if you and I start talking about some of the individuals who are moving these cases, we would get a legal action before you know it. If I go into the chamber behind me and talk about it, I'm protected by privilege. But if you and I talk about it now, um, then we're not. But if you go through cases like Tom Burgess or Catherine Belton, Carol Cadwallader, Open Democracy, the Bureau of Investigative Journalists, the, the ex-member of Parliament, Charlotte Leslie, uh, Forensic News, these, these are all organisations that are... Uh, have either just been in court or are in court now. And basically, uh, the oligarch will hire some incredibly expensive London lawyers, um, and they will basically either sue the journalist for defamation or for libel or for some kind of breach of uh, GDPR legislation. And they're not trying to win the case. All they're trying to do is keep the case in court for as long as possible, because they know that every minute in court is racking up a gigantic legal bill for the other side. And so what a lot of editors are doing is saying, well, look, we just can't afford to run your story because we just can't afford the risk of going to court. Now, what they've done in America and in Europe is they've changed the law so that the judge has actually got the power to strike out immediately anything that looks like um, a, a simplistic attempt to, to silence a journalist. And that would then stop the clock immediately. It means the costs wouldn't mount up and the journalists would therefore be actually free to go and do their investigation and Publish the truth, because the, the the point is that the uh, the story could be true. The thing that you're investigating or want to report could be true, but just the costs of fighting this that you have to start hiring lawyers and barristers and all that um, becomes pro prohibitively expensive when the thing that you've got is true. So it's not a question of you're trying to libel someone, but just the the process of having this thing thrown out then becomes prohibitively expensive. Yeah, it's not simply a case of publishing your story. It, it's a case of then having to defend your story in the courts against someone who has got no intention of winning the case. They just want to inflict a financial pain on you. So if you take Catherine Belton's case, which is quite famous, she was a, a author, brilliant author of a book called Putin's People, uh, which names a number of Russian oligarchs who, by the way, are now on the sanctions list here in the UK. Um, she was backed by uh, the very brave Arabella Collins, who's the head of nonfiction at Harper Collins. But, you know, that legal bill probably cost Harper Collins well over a million quid. And um, even though Harper Collins won the case and Catherine Belton won her case and was completely vindicated. So it's, it's, it's a problem of oligarchs basically trying to protect their reputation, to silence the truth so that they can carry on, you know, frankly, doing the business that they're doing. Um, and that old advice to journalists, follow the money if you want to find the truth, is now becoming impossible because so many journalists are being threatened by the rich and powerful.
Well, we'll see what happens later on in the House of Commons. Really good speech today, uh, Liam. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, Liam Byrne, uh, Labour MP, uh, looking to uh, amend the economic uh, crime bill. And in fact, um, the Times' top, top lawyer, Pia, was on breakfast this morning talking about how I think she, she's quite forthright with uh, telling certain people to clear off with their letters, but it's a real, it's a real problem as we've, uh, we've seen in, in recent days with certain politicians waving around legal letters as well.